So this video is talking in more depth about uh, fitting a saddle um, and how important this is that you're working with a professional that's experienced, qualified, even if you yourself and owner are very experienced and qualified. When you're fitting a tree saddle, it's really important that it fits the horse that you're using it on. I'm a big believer that every horse that is ridden has a saddle that fits them. Even if you're using one saddle on multiple horses, it's important that that one saddle fits the multiple horses that you are working with. In this case, Soreno is uh, working with us as an example, but if you wanted to see other examples of uh, saddle fitting and anatomical assessment, you can check out this other video that Claire and I have available on this subject. But Today we're just going to look at Sereno. This is his transition home. He is transitioning from the life of a sport horse to the life of a, well, let's say a horsemanship horse. So he'll be living outside in the future in a herd environment. As we make this transition, a number of things are going to change for Sereno. His feet will change, his body will change, the way he moves will change, and the way he works with me, his human, will change. So that in the future, he can teach others uh, who come to visit us as well. And so this is the perfect place for him to be making that transition and getting a saddle fitting and anatomical assessment from my friend and colleague Claire was one of the first things on the top of my list that needed to be done. Claire Marshall is a qualified and experienced saddle fitter. She also fits bits and bridles to horses. I've worked with her for approximately two and a half, almost coming on three years, and she's an essential component of my uh, horse team. PlateauHolisticEquine.com is her website. Uh, she works in Spain and the UK in person and works online with clients all over the world for distance saddle fitting. I can really recommend her, but probably the best thing I can do is show you uh, her services that she rendered for Sereno and I and let that speak for itself. So the first thing I did before we had the saddle fitting was just turn Sereno loose into the arena. This was his second time in the arena. And as you can see, he was pretty happy to be there. There was also a lot of adrenaline in his body. Uh, as you can see, there's a dog pen in the corner. There's a little bit of construction going on around the arena. There are stallions there on the left in the pens on the left and here on the right, we have two lovely mares, one of them an older mare and one of them a younger. Uh, the older mare, the black mare there, is actually belonging to Claire, the, the saddle fitter that will come visit us. So I wanted to give him an opportunity to really navigate himself in this environment before we asked anything of him. It's really important that when you conduct a saddle fitting uh, or any training with a horse, that the horse is in a place of mind and emotional expression where they feel like they can listen to you. If there are too many distractions or excitements in the environment, you're gonna to struggle to have a conversation with that horse. And uh, I was willing for Sereno to say he wasn't ready. And while I was watching him uh, do all of this, uh, I was thinking to myself, is he ready today for a saddle fitting? Because I don't wanna ride him if this is what he's doing during the saddle fitting. Um, He's also in process with his hoof care. You can see he's looking pretty sound on his feet, but he's also highly adrenalized. And adrenaline as a hormone is a pain suppressant. So he doesn't feel anything right now. He's too excited to feel anything. So I was using this time to just carefully assess him. I wasn't worried uh, about his safety. I was just carefully assessing him because here he also had many moments where he stopped quite calmly and just took in the view. And then the next second, he would kind of kick off again. And that was quite okay with me. I allowed him to kind of explore his body and express himself with joy. Uh, a lot of people would be really anxious watching their horse do this. And yes, I was aware of the potential hazards involved with a horse of his size, with his health history, uh, running around in a uh, sand arena like this. I knew of the uh, risks. Uh, so I was watching him very carefully. If this went on for longer than 20 or 25 minutes, I would have just put a stop to it. But as he demonstrated within 20 minutes, he beautifully 
self-regulated. So it's really important that we allow our horses to express themselves before we train them, handle them, or do anything in terms of care for them. That we allow them to not get their energy out, but to clean up their emotional state on their own terms without us interfering. I really wanted him to have at least 20, 30 minutes of freedom in the arena before the saddle fitter arrived. And you can see here, he's showing some beautiful regulated awareness here. Regulated meaning he is in command of his feelings and his behavior without my input, even though there's a couple of stallions over there taunting him. So I was really happy just to let him kick up his heels and run about. He had many times where he would roll. The other boys are getting very excited too, which is lovely to see. And notice that all of his expression, he makes sure that he does all of these behaviors far away from me. I felt very safe this whole time. I knew he wouldn't stampede me because he always had an eye on where I was yeah. and making sure that his fun didn't cause my harm, showing me that this is a careful horse, a considerate horse, a horse who has a regard for the well-being of the creatures around him. Beautiful, a capriole there in Liberty. Capriole is a air above ground. It wasn't a dressage capriole, it was a Liberty capriole, but Capriol nonetheless. And here you can see all of his talent for movement and expression and his joy. And who am I to step in and tell him he can't express himself like this? In the future, when he will be living in 24-7 paddock turnout, he'll be able to do this at any time he wants. So important and healthy for them to be able to express themselves safely. Now, I'm doing this with supervision. Uh, I wouldn't do this in a hilly paddock with him. I would with other horses, but not with him. His body isn't ready for that, so this is a nice flat paddock. Uh, the footing is actually quite loose, despite what it looks like in the video. It's quite loose. And um, there's good fence here with plenty of space around him. In this exercise here, I just wanted to see how Sereno would behave when his body was off balance rather than on balance. Yeah. Uh, which is a subject for another video entirely. So now uh, I stepped back and let Claire conduct her assessment and I made some short videos, not comprehensive videos, just some short ones, just that uh, helpfully summarize her findings. And here they are. Where you were seeing what with the left hind, was it? So um, he is a left hind to right for dominant. Left right. hind to right for dominant. So he's, it seems like he's been loading unnaturally his right fore, and this is possibly where the suspensory issue has come in. Loading unnaturally his right fore, yeah. Um, so from the back, now he's not square at behind, but it's quite obvious that his right, so his left uh, um, hamstring is overdeveloped. Left so hamstring's overdeveloped. Um, or it's developed more than the right, mm -hmm. and he tends to drop the right hip. Um, Interesting. So going from there and looking at the shoulder, the dominant shoulder is his right shoulder, and he's actually got a very, very, very upright scapula. Very well. upright scapula. I also and noticed the, the slight fascial line across yeah. this shoulder here. Yeah, he's really tight in, in, this, in this part Yeah, here. we've got the osteopath on the way yeah. at some point soon. So one of the things we do is we check how, we check if there is any knotting through here. And that often corresponds with pole and also with the opposite side. At the moment, he has his right scapula sits slightly higher than the left. Mm. And that's due to there's a slight pathological movement which is overcompensating yeah. because his left hind is stronger. Mm -hmm. And that is really important for fitting a saddle because we need to make sure that we're, A, we're fitting to the biggest shoulder at this time. Fitting to the biggest shoulder. Fitting to the biggest shoulder. Um, because if we're not fitting to the biggest shoulder, that can mean that because he also, when he moves, he has a lot of mobility in the lower part of the uh, spine. But not lumbar, much up front. But not an awful lot up front. So what that does is it can also shift the saddle forwards. 
So there's a lot of variables in this horse's movement without a saddle on huh. that we have to take into consideration before we even fit a saddle to him. Um, so his stride length, um, his dominant dominant leg, his dominant hind, his dominant fore. Hello, boy. Um, and he's slightly pigeon-toed, as you can see how yeah. the boots have worn themselves. Yeah. Slightly pigeon-toed on that right front as well. And you can even see how he's loading now. Look at the... Look at the tendons in the front of his upper yeah. upper leg there. You can see which one is more pronounced than the other. Let me get in there. You see this? Yeah. That yeah. tendon. I mean that pectoral muscle is probably one of the big one of the biggest I've seen in terms of the difference actually. Look at that difference. Yeah. If we see the massive, you know, overdevelopment on this side, which corresponds to the shoulder pathology. Um, but also we might see a, a slight more the, the heave line on the ascending pectoral the heave more. line on the ascending pectoral so, so the line here would be this line here it might be pulled more pronounced on that side than on the left okay well. and this is i mean we haven't asked him to stand square but at the same time he's standing as naturally and as easily as you would expect a horse to stand in this context and this is how he's chosen to stand if we got in there and tried to manipulate his square posture to try and passively correct some of these imbalances we're not really seeing how he's choosing to organize his body right which is telling us more about it than other let's have a look at that oh yeah holy cow you can really see that huh really see that difference and there is um i mean and his neck on this side at the top of the scapula is definitely softer than on the right wow well. look at that yeah it's quite noticeable isn't it it's 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 very noticeable when you look at it this way and it's not even the shadow i mean and usually on a, on a gray horse a deltoid muscle actually as well uh -huh. explain the deltoid so the deltoid is, this, is a muscle that sits here uh-huh um and it, in terms of the proportionality of his body it's not particularly prominent so it looks like it's it Based on the way. size of his yeah. body, you would want yeah. and would like You'd to see like a bit to see more. A little bit more development in that, but again, that's down to the pathology. Uh, but this isn't anything that you can't fix. <laughs> so what I'm doing is I'm just putting a little bit of pressure either side, left to right, on the pole. And again, he's um, so because his right shoulder is um, uh, tight and it's um, and he's kind of loading unnaturally on that one. His left, his left side of his pole is more sensitive uh -huh. as a result because you go in the diagonal. So. Have a look at oh, his. He's being so good, isn't he? And his, if you see that the muscle here is slightly bigger on that side. Oh yeah, side. that's really And those really are the noticeable. muscles that deal with the up and down movement in the mouth. So we need to get a dentist in so and dentist, double check. Dentist check. Dentist check. Wouldn't surprise me if there's corrections that need to be done. But, but... So at this point, I uh, stepped back and allowed Claire to actually start measuring his spine and mapping him up for one of the three test saddles she brought for me that day. And my plan was to uh, purchase the one that fitted him the best. Uh, and we couldn't stop laughing because he's so dirty. <laughs> so dirty. <laughs> hey, so, yeah, wide spine. He has his last rib. Is here. Okay. okay. He's so <laughs> And then his lattice and his, his mm. longest and his door size stops just here. So. Look at that perfect drawing. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. I'm sorry. You're happy being yeah. dirty boy, aren't you? I'm gonna just. Yes. She's, yeah. Where's the edge of his shoulder blade? Up oh, right up there. He's got these huge muscles just backing into that shoulder. Yeah. That's kind of quite unnatural, isn't it? That? This, the, yeah, this overdevelopment along here. Yeah. Kind of bunched back in on himself. Yeah. There you go. You can just about see. When we geld him, you'll probably lose a whole bunch of that neck. Yeah. yeah you will. Um, and I don't think that's necessarily going to hurt him, to be honest with you. I think it might do him some good to lose some weight along the neck. He's got to watch that the crest doesn't, doesn't drop. drop. Fall. Like my Sani, I can't have two horses with a fallen crest, can I? Yes, I can. So, and yeah, you can see there the, how upright that shoulder blade is on him. 
Yeah. You've done this before, haven't you, mate? I think so. Just a few times. Yeah. Just a few times. Just a few. <laughs> So in terms of the length of the saddle we have and panel, so we have to make sure that the panel... So we were able to fit him up to a 17 and a half inch saddle if we so desired, uh, but um, I don't need a saddle so big. Um, and we went with, I think, a 17 inch in the end. So first we uh, started with the first saddle. I lunged him in it first, and then we had a little ride in it. And here's the ride. So this is the first time I'm sitting on him in my life. I didn't uh, sit on him when I went to see him in the Netherlands because uh, even if I never rode a horse again, it's most important to me that their relationship to people on the ground is really, really healthy. I love to ride. I really enjoy riding. Uh, but it's most important to me that how they are on the ground to people is a healthy healthy thing for them. So this is in the first saddle. This is how he was walking in the first saddle. And this is how he's walking in the second. You can see that his shoulders are a lot softer, his movements less sharp. Let's have a look at it again. The first saddle. And then the second saddle. Just a lot more grounded and peaceful in his movement, which I'm happy to go with. You'll notice that I'm not asking him to get light to my hand and I'm not trying to put him in a, too much of a frame, uh, certainly not wanting him to be on the vertical or definitely not behind the vertical. I just want uh, to see what his natural posture is like, how he naturally works his way through corners and stuff. If I had a minimal intervention as the rider, how does he use himself if I have a minimal intervention? What is his original balance? original balance. What is his original balance before I ask for any collected balance? And again, I'm asking him to trot but with no suspension and keep the impulsion kind of on the low end of the scale just so that we can uh, slowly prepare those suspensories for taking again load and concussive forces. I don't feel totally together with him as a rider, I felt a little bit discombobulated in my seat um, compared to riding horses that I know. Uh, just getting used to the way his body moves uh, and the way he wants to go and taking baby step number one in introducing to him a totally different way of being ridden, being trained and moving in the training. This is a subject I'm going to expand upon a lot this year with a new online course uh, and a lot more information coming about modern movement theory and practices and how to involve more variability and less correctness into your training in order to have a healthier horse. Um, again, I'm not interested in taking him to a dressage environment or a classical environment with riding or a competitive environment. That doesn't mean I'm not interested in his performance potential. I certainly am interested in his performance potential, but with a totally different perspective. By the end here, he felt very relaxed um, and really uh, interested, lost himself in that corner there, and I didn't try to correct it. I want to see how he uses his body on his own. I don't like having to use multiple aids to do simple things in original balance. I just want to see how the horse uses their body. If I have a minimum of aids, try to stay out of their way as quietly as I can. How do they use their body? So, you know, first ride, it's pretty messy and uh, not really together and I'm got some work to do on getting him together with me, but uh, I was really happy with his demeanor. So I ended up taking that last saddle that we tried. Uh, we'll have a refitting of it again in four to six weeks. We also took a Sharf Freedom Girth with that, best girths on the market. And uh, I look forward to having more conversations with this horse and with my dear friend and colleague, Claire. Thanks for watching.